The geologic map shows us the different compositions of the ground across the land. We are going to have the most diverse populations in the areas where the ground composition is more conducive to plants and the requirements that they need to grow. Using this map, you can see which areas you would want to choose to have a diverse population based off of the array of colors. Land cover map or ecotype. From this land cover map, we can observe the diversity and use it to help us decide which areas to preserve. It is important to pick an area that is as diverse as possible so that more species are preserved. An area that is completely one color, for example, purple, then it might not be the best place to preserve. So find an area that has as many colors or species as you can. Maps showing fire perimeters. We can see where there have been fires in the past and in which areas there are more prone to catching fire. Chances are that these area and surrounding areas are going to be cleared when it catches fire. So you wouldn't want to rely on these areas to sustain a population completely on their own. Maps showing herd migrations. Um, we're able to tell from the herd migrating patterns where the caribou are located in this map in different times of the year. From this, you need to think about the importance of having caribou there and the effect that they can have on lichen populations. And conversely, you want to think about preserving the caribou and keeping their food source, like the lichens, intact as well. Shaded relief maps. On this map, we're shown the levels of elevation of the land. The higher the elevation, the lower the oxygen levels. And we know that lichen do not grow as well in areas of higher elevation. How does this affect where you would decide to have your population of lichen compared to your other observations of the surrounding area? Using a species area curve. This graph compares the average number of species per number of subplots. We can tell from this graph that when we start with just a few subplots, that the average number of species drastically increases until we hit the 20 to 30 range. After 30 subplots, the average continues to increase, but drastically less. So you can see that increasing the different subplots for example, not preserving one big area, but preserving several smaller areas in diverse locations, can drastically increase our diversity. From this, we can decide how many areas we should have with a lichen population and what size they should be. Take some time to look back over all of the maps that we've talked about and take your observations from each to decide where would be the best place or places to preserve the lichen populations.